All right, good evening. Um, this is a special meeting of the Carabelle City Commission, and it is now in session. It's Thursday, December the 15th, 2022, 5 p.m., and we're conducting uh, this public hearing and the special meeting in the Carabelle City Hall Chambers. And our meeting will open with a prayer by Commissioner Millender, and then I will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for another wonderful day. Thank you for allowing us to come together and conduct our business here for the benefit of the uh, great city of Carabelle. As we go through our business here tonight, we ask your guidance and direction in doing the welfare and business that is in the proper manner for the welfare of the citizens in the city of Carabelle. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one my nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, welcome again. I'm glad you're all here. Um, if, if any, like I said before, if anyone wants to speak, if you want to speak under uh, either of these items or even both of these items that we have on the agenda, you'll need to complete a speaker card and, and, and give that to, to Ms. Keisha and also sign in on the log. If you didn't sign in on the sign-in sheet, do that on your way out if you would. Um, it, with the speaker card, we'll have, uh, you'll be allowed three minutes at the podium and then uh, at just a one time. So uh, please, please do that because you may have questions. And then uh, um, on, the, on the item that uh, some of you are here about, uh, we won't be voting on that today. Uh, so just a first reading and we'll vote on that at our second hearing, which is scheduled for January the 5th. So um, right now we need to make an uh, uh, amendment to the agenda. And I'm going to request that we move uh, item one before the public hearing. And do we have a, a motion for that? Okay, we have that motion by Commissioner Millender. Okay, and that's second by Commissioner Brown. Um, uh, is there any discussion on that? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, and then that motion carries. Okay, so we'll move then right into uh, item one, which is a discussion of possible action regarding hiring a water and sewer tech one employee. And I believe that you all did your interviews. If uh, Courtney or Charlie would like to, to just tell us about that. And, okay. and then tell us your recommendation would be good as well. So I had four applications. I interviewed three. One of the applicants didn't put a phone number on, and I tried to couple, call a couple of references, and I didn't get any answers, so that applicant didn't get interviewed. Um, my recommendations would be Jerry Lowe. And he has some experience working with Wayne Conrad and uh, the St. George Island wastewater plants, and uh, uh, shows interest in trying to get a license and stuff in, in the near future. Okay. Uh, and Ms. Courtney, did you interview with Mr. Lowe? Okay. Um, so, um, does it, do the commissioners have any questions at this point? Or Mr. Charlie Painter is our water and sewer superintendent. I don't have any questions. I had discussion with the city administrator about the process that uh, Charlie went through with his interviews and, and his interviews. So, I'm, I'm content with that. And I'll make a motion to accept uh, Mr. Painter's recommendation. Okay, we have that motion by Commissioner Millender. Do we have a second? I'll second. And Mr. Lowe is in here if you want to introduce him. But uh, Jerry Lowe's in the back. Right here. Okay. Hello. 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 My name is Jerry Lowe. I uh, lived here for quite some time. I was a terrible panther at one point. I just moved back and now I'm a property owner in Caraville and seems like a really good job for me. I think I'd like to work until retirement, which is about 35 years from now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you then. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm going to say I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to meet you. And yes, I did speak with, uh, we're in discussion now. I spoke with Miss uh, Courtney as well. And she told me uh, about the interviewing uh, process. And we appreciate you doing that. So uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Bellinger, second by Commissioner Brown to um, approve the recommendation by staff to hire Mr. Jerry Lowe for uh, the Water and Sewer Department. Is there any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And that motion carries. And thank you, Mr. Charlie thank Painter. You. And welcome aboard, Mr. Lowe. We really look forward to seeing you. All right, thanks. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> All right, then we'll move on to the public hearing, which is ordinance number 487, and I'm going to ask Mr. Hartman to read the title of that first for us. Okay, this is ordinance number 487 by title, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Carabelle, Florida, authorizing operation of golf carts on certain city-owned and maintained streets and roads, prescribing standards for equipment required on golf carts, operated on city streets, requiring the posting of signs pertaining to where golf carts may be operated, providing for enforcement, appealing conflicting ordinances, and providing a savings clause and providing effective date. Okay, thank you. Uh, today, uh, I learned that there was a, a small group of people in, in Carabelle that uh, for some reason, I don't know where they, they got this, I don't know how they figured it, but they figured that the commission was trying to develop an ordinance to ban golf cart operation in the city. And that's uh, far from what we're trying to do here. We're trying to get uh, golf cart operations allowed in the city by, as required by Florida statute as soon as possible. That's why we're having this special meeting tonight even. So, um, and I, I'm going to ask Mr. Hartman to read this uh, ordinance that we have. It's a, it's a, a it's this, this many words and this many words, and I want him to read a paragraph graph by paragraph, and if the commission has questions, we're going to ask questions, uh, but I've told him he doesn't have to read the definitions unless you all want a definition of a golf cart, low-speed vehicle, utility vehicle, and all-terrain vehicle. But that will, the definitions are here, and they'll be included in the ordinance if anyone has a question there according to Florida statute. So, uh, Mr. Hartman, if you'll, if you'll tell us what you have there for your amended ordinance. All right. So, it starts out with the whereas clauses, and that is, whereas pursuant to section 316.212 for statutes, the City Commission has the power to adopt ordinances necessary to authorize operation of golf carts on designated city streets and roads. Whereas the City Commission finds the operate, that operating golf carts on streets and roads within the city is desirable to conserve energy, reduce automobile traffic, and provide alternative modes of travel for its citizens, and whereas the City Commission finds that it has considered factors regarding public safety, including the speed, volume, and character of motor vehicle traffic using streets or roads designated for golf cart traffic and has determined that use of golf carts in the areas permitted by this ordinance will not present a danger to the public health, safety, or welfare. And, whereas the City Commission desires to maintain a high quality of life for the citizens of Carabelle, Florida. Now, therefore, be enacted by the City Commission of the City of Carabelle, Florida. Okay, and let me ask you some questions about the whereas. So it says in there that the City Commission finds that operating golf carts and streets and roads within the city is desirable. It says that, right? We all, we all know that. We all agree to that in principle. Okay. It's desirable to conserve energy, reduce automobile traffic, and to provide alternate modes of travel for its citizens. And it says that we have determined, this commission as a whole, the majority, has determined that golf, the use of golf carts in the areas permitted by this ordinance will not present a danger to the public health, safety, and welfare. We all agree that it's, that's what this ordinance says? Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hartman. All right. The next section, section one, is definitions, and these definitions include the definition of golf cart, low-speed vehicle, utility vehicle, and all-terrain vehicle. The next section is section two. And uh, section two, number one, is that golf carts may be operated on all streets and roads within the city 
with the following exceptions, where the posted speed limit is 35 miles an hour or less. And it's on Highway 98, except, so we're allowing golf carts to cross at, well, I say this, with DOT approval that Russell's working on, at Southeast 3rd Street and Highway 98, and 4th Street Northwest and Highway 98. Number two, golf carts must be operated on streets and roads within the city as defined herein and not on adjacent sidewalks. Number three, all golf, all golf carts operated within the city limits of Carabelle shall be equipped with efficient brakes, reliable steering apparatus, safe tires, a rear view mirror, red reflectorized warning devices on the front and rear of the vehicle, brake lights, and a windshield. Number four, operators of golf carts equipped as described above must use standard hand and arm signals to advise other motorists of their intention to turn or change lanes. See his typo there. Number five, number five, pay, pay special attention here. I'm gonna read this and I had missed a, I would call a clerical error in this before, but I'm gonna read it as it will appear in the ordinance and it's golf carts equipped as described in number three above may operate on any street located in the city other than those designated in section two sub one at any time during daylight hours so that's how that will read number six golf carts equipped with headlights tail lights brake lights and turn signals in addition to the items in number three above and otherwise equipped for nighttime operation in accordance with Florida law, may operate on designated streets and roads during all hours, including non-daylight hours. The city may extend hours of operation in conjunction with special events. Number seven, drivers of golf carts must be at least 14 years old. Number eight, golf carts may not be operated on state roads identified in section two, sub one within the city limits or on sidewalks adjacent to such state or any roads within the city limits. Golf carts may not cross state owned roads unless at locations specifically permitted by the Florida Department of Transportation and County respectively. And number nine, this ordinance does not regulate operation of golf carts in gated communities with private roads. Okay, uh, Commissioner Brown, did that get your um, clerical uh, okay. revisions? Okay. Uh, do you have questions? Does anyone have questions to Mr. Hartman about this section here, section two? Okay, I do, just for public, and I do sure, have a question. Sure, no. um, at one point, uh, the word uh, under A, 1A, uh, Highway 98, there you had pending FDOT approval. Why? I don't know how that got got lost. I think, it, although you say it down here uh, in number eight, uh, section, a uh, number eight parentheses under section two, I, I, I'm thinking if you put it up there, it would help for clarity for law enforcement or, you know, uh, what, what do you think about that, Commissioner Brown? That makes sense. Okay. All right, so we'll put that back in. I know that's okay. It, and that, that All right. Shouldn't, change and so what what it's saying then I just want to make sure I understand it now is that golf carts may be operated on all streets and roads in Carabelle within the city limits uh, where the speed limit is 35 is that correct 35 miles or less uh -huh. all county and city roads not state roads right except the the following exception that's that's listed there and uh, that's on highway 98 why can't they operate on highway 98 because it is a state road. And what, the state won't allow them to operate on Highway 98? Correct. Okay, that's what I thought. All right, so they can operate, If we're, what are we doing right now? Are we gonna reach out to the state and see if we can cross mm -hmm. here at these yes. sections? Yes, Russell is, I think, following direction that was given by the commission at a prior meeting that he is to contact DE, um, DOT to inquire about just the requirements and get approval for those two crossings that are listed there. Okay, and that crossing is at Southeast 3rd Street and Highway 98 where the old Dollar General is. You can cross over to the west side of Sands Park. And then that other one 
is at uh, right there at Veterans Park and the boat ramp, and you cross over at, on the west side of Veterans Park. Is that is that yes. what we okay? And we're going to ask the FDOT if we can do that. All right. Uh, but golf carts can't go on on sidewalks. Is that correct? Correct. No okay. sidewalks. And and that's that's according to Florida statute. Is that yes. correct? Okay. And then where it gives uh, the equipment listed, is that that's according to Florida statute, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And um, then the uh, they have to use their standard arm signals and, and that kind of stuff. That's according to Florida statute. Yes. All right. Um, and then they got to have uh, headlights and taillights and, and brake lights and turn signals if they want to operate during non-daylight hours. Now, that's Florida statute too. Is that right? Correct. Okay, and then you just go ahead down here in number eight, and it just reconfirms that uh, pending FDOT approval that golf carts may not cross state-owned roads unless at locations that are specifically permitted by the Florida Department of Transportation and County, respectively. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. So then section three, entitled low-speed vehicles. And a low-speed vehicle may be operated within the city limits where the posted speed limit is 35 mile, miles an hour per hour or less as permitted by and under the conditions established in Florida statute section 316.2122 pursuant to Florida statute section 316.2122 sub 1 this does not prohibit a low-speed vehicle from crossing a road or street at an intersection where the road or street has a posted speed limit more than 35 miles an hour According to the requirements set forth in Florida statute section 316.2122, a low-speed vehicle must be equipped with head, headlights, brake lights, spelling, turn signal lamps, reflex reflectors, parking brakes, rear view mirrors, windshield, seat belts, and vehicle identification numbers. A low-speed vehicle must be registered and insured in accordance with section 320.02 Florida statutes. Number three, low-speed vehicles may operate be operated at any time. So that deals with, again, low-speed vehicles, not golf carts. Section, um, section four, utility vehicles. A utility vehicle may be operated during a city-approved special event only on city streets and roads within the special event area <coughs> preparing for, conducting, or recovering from an approved special event. The utility vehicle must be equipped with efficient brakes, reliable steering, safe tires, a rear view mirror, red reflectorized warning devices in front and rear, brake lights, and a windshield. Number three, a utility vehicle may be operated during a city approved special event within the special event designated area consistent with Florida law. Number four, a utility vehicle may not be operated on any city streets and roads by anyone. Five, all terrain vehicles shall not be considered utility vehicles and are expressly prohibited from operation on any and all city streets and roads. Question. Mm -hmm. Clarification for the public. Define a low-speed vehicle. All right. A low-speed vehicle, and this is pursuant to section 320.0142, is any four-wheeled um, vehicle, electric vehicle, it says here, whose top speed is greater than 20 miles an hour, but not greater than 25 miles an hour, including neighborhood electric vehicles, and low-speed vehicles must conform to the safety standards that we described earlier, as far as brake lights and registration and insurance and that sort of thing. Okay, but I, I have a question for the public. Because I know of a couple that's here in town. <coughs> I don't know if they're going to classify them as utility vehicles or low-speed vehicles. They look like a, a utility vehicle. But what's just defined is defining a low-speed vehicle. There is a definition of utility vehicle as well. I understand that. Yep. But it's confusing to me, and I know it's confusing to the public, for those that have the vehicles that can be misconstrued as a utility vehicle, and they're calling it, and it is actually, by what you just said, a low-speed vehicle. If it's a low-speed vehicle, I'll give you an it, no, just go ahead. I'll give you an example. A Polaris Ranger, UPV, electric. It's limited to less than 25. 
but it looks, it's, it's, and it meets the headlights, all the requirements. Right. But it, that officer, when he goes out there to, to <clears throat> perform his duties, it looks like a utility bill. But it meets all those requirements as a low speed bill. But it is a utility vehicle <clears throat> and therefore would not be allowed. But what arrest. defines it, the difference between a utility vehicle and a low speed vehicle? Is utility vehicle is a motor vehicle designed and manufactured for general maintenance, security, and landscaping purposes. So, I mean, again, I think Polaris Ranger would be what you have out on your farm or you're using it for maintenance, security, landscaping, obviously hunting, that sort of thing. But that is not a golf cart or a low-speed vehicle. It's, it's a fine line. It's, it's it is, it is. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not trying to complicate it. I'm just trying to make sure we can be clear with the public. Well, I know that you know people talk about ATVs. Because when I think of a Ranger or a four-wheeler, I mean, I know four-wheeler is different than a Ranger, but ATVs can also blend into UTVs. Not really. I, I, I see a difference. <laughs> I see a significant difference between an ATV and a UTV. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that the chief could help with this uh, definition as well. Could they be registered and tagged? They are. Mm -hmm. then so then, so that's what I just asked. Mm -hmm. yeah, if it's registered and tagged, then it's not it's not loaded, then exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it looks just like a UT tag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they have a tag on them, do they have a tag on them? A, a regular tag like uh, a Florida State issue one tag. One <coughs> yeah, it would be a yeah. Florida State issue tag. Yeah. It would have a VIN number. It would have to go through the Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles to be registered. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you have insurance and it's tagged, mm -hmm. then yeah, you're good. Yeah. Register and tag. I'm not wanting to complicate what we're doing here, but I want to make sure we're clear with the public when we have to deal with it. Let me simplify. Any vehicle that can be registered and tagged yes. and insured is is allowable to drive on the roadway. And that would be even State Road 98. Okay, there's here you go. That's one further question. Yeah. Okay. It's crossing the bridge. Yes. Uh, as long as it has, as long as it's less than 35 miles an hour and it's got a tag and insured mm -hmm. and it's been registered with the Florida Highway Safety Motor Vehicle, yes sir. Okay. That's what I understand, but I here again I'm just discussing for the benefit of the public. Yep. Thank you, sir. Sorry, Dan. That's fine. I, mean, you know, it's, it's I would, I would ask, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck on utility vehicle too because uh, there's a lot of folks out there with utility vehicles and they, they're insisting that they're golf carts and, um, you know, as, as I've been studying this and actually over the years, this is something I've, liked, I've wanted to have a golf cart ordinance for 11 years, but we never took it up because it's, it's so controversial, but we're doing it now. Um, get it done. Yes, we are. Um, a utility vehicle. Let me find it before you just read this. Um, the Florida Florida statute will not allow a, a regular utility vehicle that we, you just described here in Section 4 to operate on a public road. Is that correct? Florida that's, statute. that's, yes, yeah, my reading. Florida because statute. a, a low-speed vehicle can't go over 25 miles an hour. I don't know if a, the UTV particular can. But so. Florida statute will, will not allow utility vehicles on roadways, any roadways in Florida, except during Correct. a special event approved by the city or the county. Correct. Okay. All right. And, and Florida statute, I think, does not allow all-terrain vehicles on, on any, any uh, roadways in Florida. It has to be operated on private roads. Road vehicles is basically what an mm -hmm. is. Yep, yeah, there is, and, and again, if there is one exception on like unpaved, unpaved, unpaved road roads road. <coughs> that are less than 35. Okay. All right. All right. Do we have any other other questions? Okay. Mr. Right. The Commissioner Gray, do you have anything? I think I do. Okay. I have a club car that we've outfitted with a dump bed on the back. Still a golf cart. What's it? So it's Consider 25 or less, it'd be, if it's 20 to 25, instead of low speed, anything over 25 is 
going to be under 20 is golf cart that's just outfitted with a dump bed. Yeah, as long as it's classified as a golf cart. What is the, what is the classification of the vehicle is, is what matters most. It doesn't matter what it looks like, it's what it's classified as through DHSMB. Right. Thank you. Okay, anything else? That's it. Okay. All right, uh, thank you, and, and go ahead. Is it can Mr. Hartman move forward? Yes. Okay. Yes. So Section 5 is uh, operator to assume risk and identify and hold harmless. This is where uh, any person operating a golf cart on any city street does so at his own risk and must operate such a vehicle with due regard for the safety, convenience, and other, of other motor vehicles, bicyclists, and pedestrians. The city is so designating certain city streets for operation of golf carts extends such operating privileges on the express condition that the operator of the golf carts undertakes such operation at his or her own risk and assume the sole liability for operation of the vehicle on city streets and by such operation shall be deemed to agree to defend, release, identify, and hold harmless the city of Carabell, its officials and employees for and regarding any and all claims, demands, or damages of any nature whatsoever arising from such operation by any person against the city of Carabell. Um, then you've got Section 6, Compliance. This is golf carts shall comply with all applicable local and state traffic laws in the same manner as a motor vehicle under state law and shall be occupied by no more passengers than for whom there are seats in the golf cart. Section 7, Enforcement. Golf carts, uh, number one, <clears throat> golf carts, utility vehicles, and low-speed vehicles shall comply with all local and state traffic laws and may be cited for traffic violations in the same manner as other vehicles. Number two, enforcement of infractions of this section shall be provided in chapter, uh, as provided in chapter 316 for statutes, as may be amended from time to time. Law enforcement may issue citations for violations as set forth in state law. And then section eight, which is severability, that if any portion of this ordinance is declared invalid or enforceable, then to the extent it's possible to do so without destroying the overall intent and effect of the ordinance, the portion deemed invalid or unenforceable shall be severed herefrom, and the remainder of this ordinance shall continue in full force and effect as if it were enacted without including the portion found to be invalid or unenforceable. And then section <coughs> nine is the repeal of all ordinance or parts of ordinances which are in conflict with this ordinance by repeal to the extent necessary to alleviate the conflict, but shall continue in effect insofar as they are not in conflict herewith, unless repeal of the conflicting portion destroys the overall intent and effect of any of the conflicting ordinances, in which case these ordinances so affected shall hereby be repealed in their entirety. Section 10 is the ordinance becoming effective upon adoption. And there's two other issues that I know have been, been well, number one, this is just first reading, so no action required tonight. The second was a mission I was given after the last meeting, which I'm seeing again here. I was provided paperwork. Again, it has the stamp of DOT on it, who I have reached out to, to two different people at DOT. I've not heard back from, from either. To, the, to this question, on golf carts operating on designated roadways with posted speed limits of 30 miles an hour or less. So at this point, um, obviously I'm still waiting to hear back. I don't have the final word, which I, I'm, it's frustrating, but I did obviously dig into the plain language of the statute and where this language is found, which talks about golf carts um, not being allowed to be operated or not operating on roads with posted speed limits of uh, more than 30 miles per hour. But this language of 30 miles an hour or less is in a section uh, uh, 212, sorry, 316.2126 that deals with municipal employees operating golf carts. So not under a golf cart ordinance, but just if there was, even if there was no golf cart ordinance, City employees can operate golf carts and use them for um, just municipal purposes, say picking up trash or code enforcement, that sort of thing, um, in the absence or even without a golf cart ordinance. And this language is in that, this is where that language is from, and it restricts those employees from driving out onto roads that have posted speed limits, um, but they limit them to driving golf carts on roads with a 30 mile an hour or less speed limit. So these would be roads that none of which are posted for golf carts or anything. But, so at this point, 
until DOT tells us different, regardless of, and that's frustrating because we, you know, I've seen this now two or three places, um, and this one is has an FDOT symbol on it, and it talks about that, but I cannot find anything in the law that, that, that requires that in the statute. So until someone points that out to me, and I've looked. Now, <coughs> My clarification, 30 miles an hour. Now, are we talking about general public use, or are we talking about employee, a public employee use? Uh, city, county, state employees using those vehicles for their use of maintenance, etc. Are we talking about citizens' use or talking about employee usage? <coughs> so, sorry, that's the, that's the distinction I'm making. So, at, yes, at the last meeting, and this has popped up, and it, it's very confusing because, for instance, this is this is for public. This isn't for municipal, right? This is telling people, hey, golf carts, how to use them safely on in Florida. Correct. And on the back, I was looking for it in here, and on the back it has golf carts versus low-speed vehicles, a little chart, and it gives everything here is consistent, consistent, and it says where can it be operated. And it says on designated roadways with posted speed limits of 30 miles an hour or less. All right? So that's a... This is not a legal document necessarily, it's just informational. And where you find that 30 miles an hour or less language is, is down in, I'll put an explanation of this, um, in 316.2126, which is a whole different section of statute than what we're dealing with. So we're, we're adopting an ordinance under 316.212, which is, we keep calling it, and it's right, it's a golf cart ordinance statute where a city can designate its roadways inside the city um, as for use with golf carts. This is something addition, and it says, in addition to the powers granted under 316.212, it says that municipalities can are authorized to use golf carts and utility vehicles um, on municipal roads located in within, within the corporate limits of the city. And these are, again, operated by municipal employees. And it states here under 1C, that it's, this is where this language comes from, I believe, golf carts and utility vehicles may be operated only on state roads that have a posted speed limit of 30 miles an hour or less. And again, that there's also the, <laughs> I know it's late, and everybody worn out, but it also talks about state roads. So that's 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 a different, and they make, in some places, they mix the two together. In other places, you know, are state roads local, county, or city, county, and state, or is it just state, and they're not? But again, that language that I found here, and that in other material that people have given me, that's the language, and it... Um, it's not in 316.212. 316.212 just says, hey, you've got to consider the speed, the volume, type of traffic. It doesn't say 30 miles, you know, if it's 30 miles an hour or it only roads 30 miles, miles an hour or less, supposed to speak on Okay, well, my feeling right now is, is my feeling is, I would like to see us continue to move forward with what we're doing, not stall, and uh, where we can get our golf carts back in legal use within the city, and those questions that we have, such as that, with low-speed vehicles, utility, whatever, we can address those down the road. We, when we get a plain answer for those, I wouldn't want to stall what we're doing right now to wait on answers for that right there. That's just my feeling. Uh, uh, Commissioner Mellinger, I feel the same. I don't want to stall it. And we did talk about at our commission meeting that we would, uh, if we found out some different things or experienced some different things with the age of the drivers or something, that we could always come back and amend it. That's correct. Uh, Apalachicola has amended their golf cart ordinance three times now. But I, <laughs> I will say one thing. Uh, you said to bring them back into legal operation 
golf carts have been operating for almost uh, in, in a couple of months. Golf carts will have been operating in the city limits of Florida illegally for 40 years. They've never operated legally. We, the commission, not necessarily this board, but the commission for the past 40 years has looked the other way and has has the uh, police department. But there has never been designated golf cart roads according to the Florida statute and golf carts were operating illegally in the, in the city limits. Is that correct, Mr. Hartman? Were, were the golf carts operating illegally for 40 years? We did not have a golf cart ordinance. Right. It, yeah, so would, we yeah, have designated like no roads that golf carts But we, we, we're going to get an ordinance. We're going to have, it sounds to me like every road in Carabelle except for the state highway is going to be designated golf cart for golf cart operation. You'll get an ordinance and you'll be able to operate your golf carts legally. And then we'll become golf cart friendly and people can come here and visit and drive their golf carts and uh, rent golf carts and that kind of thing. So uh, expect to see a bunch more on the road, I believe. Yeah, I'd like okay. to address that too make that statement. Uh, where I made that statement about golf cart ordinances, we, we can move forward and get our folks back on the road. Public realize with a golf cart, cart ordinance, Mr. Attorney, you correct me legally if I make a misstatement. The only thing we're doing here in creating a golf cart ordinance beyond state law is identifying the roadways. Every other law, rule, and regulation is state law and has been in effect for years. <coughs> Am I correct? Correct. Exactly. <laughs> so the only thing we're doing by creating an ordinance is identifying the roadways, and that's it. And that's what makes it legal to operate your golf cart is when the roadways are identified by state. Um, I had some questions uh, uh, under the uh, hold, uh, assume risk uh, and hold harmless section five. I got quite a few calls after our uh, commission meeting discussion. Folks want to understand where is the liability? Who is liable if a golf cart causes an accident? I would say whoever's at fault for the accident. I mean, I shouldn't have said the golf cart, the operator of the golf cart. So whoever's at fault accident. I mean, this is sort of a pro. I mean, this is my opinion only, right? I mean, okay. This is not. This is not a city. The city wouldn't get involved in that, right? Meaning, if someone was driving a golf cart and they had a conflict with another golf cart or car or person, I mean, a dog, like any number of things, right? Any sort of accident in their golf cart when they're driving on one of these roads that will be designated, the fault will fall out however the law sees it, right? But it's my opinion. Yeah, the city would not would not have any liability um, if that's the question. Um, and um, my question my question came from citizens. They wanted to know what was, who you know for their own personal vehicle or health. They wanted to know how 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 that works because golf carts aren't insured. I don't believe you know. I mean, it would be no different than someone on a bicycle okay. or anything like that. All Meaning, right. if 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 the bicyclist or the golf cart person was at fault, mm -hmm. then it's the owner, whoever's probably driving it, and the owner of that. You'd have two people on the hook. It would be the owner of the golf cart and the person driving it. Okay. All right. Thank you. And for folks who will watch the video, I hope they, they understand. Um, then uh, I, I would ask, and I did ask at the commission meeting, that the signature lines for all the commission members be put on this one. Thank you. On this ordinance. That's, I think, all I have for now. Um, do the commissioners have anything else? Because I'm going to call for public discussion, comments, and questions. Anything? All right, okay. All right, so do we have a public comment? I've got uh, Mary Ray. Okay. Now we have two. So. Okay. My name is Mary Ray with the Panhandle Golf Carts. I just had a quick question. Okay. If they tell me, uh -huh. if they bring an out of town, say, golf cart or the slow moving vehicle, and it's already registered in another state, does that count? 
Yeah, it's registered in Georgia. It's got a lot of insurance and all that in its tag. They can still write yeah. it. Oh, two, two things. One, I defer to the chief on, on one of it, but if it's a golf cart, as long as it meets these requirements, which does not require it to be registered, tagged, any of that, you're fine. But if it's a out-of-state low-speed vehicle, yes, be because like you any can other turn vehicle. a golf cart into one. Yes. So I guess and I'll go off of what the chief's saying. Just think of it like a car. If okay. it's registered, insured, it would meet all the Florida requirements, it's good. Now, on the side-by-sides, whether they're tagged or not, they're not allowed on the roads, right? Right. That's a utility vehicle, a side by side. Yeah. I guess that would be easy. Okay. If it's tagged, it's tagged, licensed, and insured. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. It, is it, it, if it the is. state will license and insure it, because there are some side by sides that have tags and they're registered. Yeah, but they also go over 25 miles an hour as well. Yeah. They're not they're going to speed. Yep. Yeah, they're not going to speed enough. Tag. That's what we have to find out from the DHS and D on that one. Because the statute says no utility vehicles. But the DHS and D would be the one that would tag it and license it. So. These are questions I'm getting from customers. So yeah. We're trying to find out. <coughs> and see. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. And on the 30 to 35, um, I was reading up on that. There, there is some gray areas, but there is one spot in there that kind of leaves it up to the municipal powers to change it from 30 to 35. I'll get that up for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I had talked to, um, um, I don't want to call out names, but um, a panhandle patio, a panhandle golf carts out there. Um, a couple of three years ago about um, golf carts uh, trying to get some courtesy transportation at the airport and so now it looks like that might happen because we can come down to um, down airport road but is it 45 mile okay I'm sorry you know I'm trying to think where does it turn 35 I have to go past the bridge I hate that no, I've but, thought of it. okay <laughs> all right we're just trying to get some service out to the airport but Anyway, all right. Thank you. So, is there another? Is there another public comment? Great. Can I ask Christopherson? Okay, and, and bring his bring his little. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Great, Christopherson. All right, mine was just pretty much what the mayor was asking about um, liability. So, just say it's a bad accident, and golf cart pulls in front of me, and the driver is killed. And then, you know, lawsuits and stuff come together. Then could uh, this indemnification uh, releases your uh, the golf cart driver? But what about myself? Can I sue the city then because you put this in place? I'm just putting it out there, you know, as a as an attorney. You know, I've I've been involved in an accident. The child was killed. I'm basically talking about like an unlicensed driver. Uh, you know, can I can I sue the city? Because you, in, because you put this in place. You know. right, what keeps lawyers in question is anybody can sue anybody at any time. <laughs> right? For almost anything. Um, but your question is because now the city is allowing, is, is adopting this ordinance and allowing golf carts to, to be on the city streets located in the city, is the city, would the city somehow be liable if someone violated the law, meaning they crossed 98 at the wrong spot? Or, or just ran a stop sign coming across 67, and you you ran over them, and you were hurt, or your vehicle was damaged. Would you be able to sue the city? Again, you could try, but I don't see how. Again, you sort of go back to who was at fault in the accident. Meaning, if you were at fault, I think you have bigger problems than you know, trying to go to the city. If you were not at fault, then you have the liable party, which is the, the city does not guarantee against golf cart drivers acting the fool or making mistakes driving just trying to keep the city safe so yeah yeah no appreciate it yeah. <laughs> uh, bob mcdaris thanks come on <clears throat> sir and just tell us your name for the record i'm bob mcdaris <laughs> thank you um, i'm not on the phone i'm about the map that's my map that's okay. right there I had a, um, a couple of uh, quick questions. I do have um, 
a little bit of dissension, a little, a little bit of uh, disagreement, but nothing that I would ever get rowdy over. Okay, good. <laughs> but, but I think, I, I think it um, deserved to be mentioned. But I did have one question on the, um, when you were reading the law, on each instant, you said the word electric. <coughs> and was that a misstatement, or you meant to add? No, and one of the definitions, and that's certainly interesting, right, is under the definition of low-speed low vehicle, it only refers to electric vehicles yes. under low-speed vehicles. I just wanted to point out no, that yeah, that's not. I did. Is, I did say that. I know. If wheeled I electric. Somebody else will. <laughs> yeah, wheeled electric vehicle. Yeah. We could follow up on that between now and the fifth, if you if you want to, to because that just it doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, that some low speed vehicles are gas powered, and I, I just don't understand that. It would come. Right. It would create a cleaner ordinance. Yeah. If, if that were, uh, just if you didn't say just no no power. Like yeah. Uh huh. Well, again, that's not our ordinance. No, that's Florida statute. It's Florida statute definition there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so okay. um, a couple other questions. I, um, I have to say I, I've done a lot of homework and research uh, uh, simply riding around looking at the stop signs. And, and I've been using the golf cart for a long time, and, um, and I have some feelings about the different routes. Um, and... The one that I had the, the question about was the um, 4th Street Northwest. I, that was one right away. It was one of my checkoffs. So, yeah, let's let's put that in there. But as I drove it over and over, I found it, that is a very very difficult intersection. Even if you don't have a bad neck when you, you're coming down, mm -hmm. it, it's a three-way stop. I don't know any any 14-year-old uh, uh, children that know the rules of the road for a three-way stop. So um, it, it is complicated. It's one of the mo more complicated uh, ordinances in the city. And uh, so I was talking to friends about it, and they said, well, that, that's the one that goes the boat ramp. That goes down to the boat ramp. I said, oh, oh yes, of course. Now I thought about it. I, I never have seen a golf cart putting a boat in there. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I thought maybe that might not be still may not be the best they, the um y'all when y'all worked on on those crossings did a great job with uh southeast third street that's one of my favorite favorite crossings you've got a uh, a long runway that you can see where the cars are coming and not you know and so it's and not a lot of hit, hidden traffic and uh so that was a really good shot but the other one i that um four street well, thank you. Now, now since you road. have taken time and, and drove around and you say you, you know, used your golf cart for many years, a long time, do you, ha do you have another suggestion I, I that we... you were going to ask that. Well... <laughs> here's the, here's the, the whole thing. It's, it's, um, you give up something to get something. And, uh, and that gives you, uh, allows you to the boat ramp. But then there's nothing that allows you to uh, Caravelle Marina, Moorings Marina, um, both of them have two entrances to it, and that covers uh, about a quarter of a mile down in front of the, front of the IGA. Um, and I was thinking that something down there might be a little bit better. You, you can use, I assume, <laughs> you can use the dirt trail uh, going the other way, going east, uh, behind uh, fathoms and uh, oh yes, you know, uh, you, behind you can use yes. that to get that, mm -hmm. but it still you won't be able to get the next block. Okay, and let can, me ask Miss Courtney to pull up the aerial map of that area because we we did we reviewed it. I've been through this for years and with Chief Hunting's even in the past, and this is one of the reasons we didn't address it because. Some locations are going to be disenfranchised yes. because of the FDOT guidelines. And I'll ask the chief to explain to us about mid-block crossings, and that's what we'll have there at the at the locations you mentioned. Yeah, FDOT won't approve of that mid-cross block, uh, mid 
mid-block crossings. Um, and, and what is a mid-block crossing? That's crossing between between two different blocks. In the middle of the block, you can't cross. It has to be a roadway entering out into another roadway. So like a four-way intersection. Right. Yeah. And, and they won't even allow a crosswalk <laughs> at a, a mid-block crossing. And the, and the thing to keep in mind, too, sir, once, once FDOT does their stuff, they come in and they look at everything, if they don't approve any of the crossings that we have suggested, then we'll reach out to them for suggestions where they may approve one at and go that route. But we won't know that until FDOT comes in and does it. So that boat ramp is, that's, that's just considered, a suggestion. That's a considered a street, and, yeah. and yes. that would be a mid-block. Mm -hmm. yeah. But no, to get not over, a good mid block. Not a mid block. No, not a, uh, a, a, over here to the Carabell Marina, Miss Courtney, um, to the to the west there. See, there's no there's no street. There's no what their driveway is right gotcha. in the. So there's no way, and and then it's the same way for the. That's the moorings. The next one's uh -huh, the Carabell Marina. For the moorings. Make you see it better on the property. Uh, it, it, you know. It was a good, that was a good, that was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and that's, yeah, that's I see what, what makes you mean. It, it, that makes it difficult. And, you know, we thought about crossing here at, in the years past, at, right here, out here in front of City Hall, but yeah. they're really going fast out there. Um, and yes. we've asked the, the FDOT to please slow down our, um, We've had traffic analysis done out here at the curb. I've had a traffic analysis done here in years past. I've had a traffic analysis done at the main intersection downtown. We have asked and asked for them over the past 11 years for the FDOT to slow down our speed limit in town to 25, and they absolutely will not do it. And if it was 25, then, you know, we could take golf carts out there as well. If, no, no, we can't. They won't allow us on any state. Well, I, I just hate it for us to uh, miss a chance to have a crossing and it doesn't go anywhere. And, uh, and, and It would go to one business. Yeah. That's okay. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, once, and once FDOT comes in and does their thing, then we'll have a clearer picture yeah. of what they approve or not approve, and then we can get recommendations from them. Maybe another location on Highway 98 that they may feel is more safer. So. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, but I did have one other concern. Okay. Good. That, that was my softball that I like to have. This one's a little, a little tougher. Um, and that just simply an opinion. <laughs> and that's the uh, oper operation age, the operating age. And it, and I would hate to think that we didn't give it all the thought that we could possibly give it, and I'm sure we have. And uh, it's it's just a little bit dicey with 14-year-olds. Um, we have no evidence that they know the rules of the road. And we're putting them out there. My car weighs 2,000 pounds. We're, going, we're putting them out there with automobiles, and, um, and it's a really s s serious Danger, as far as, as far as I'm concerned, but um, I've I've got all my grandchildren. We we brought them up on the golf cart, and uh, but I wouldn't let them. I would never let them go out on the city street without me, even when they were 16 years old in the car. Then they could go. Then then we put them out and use a judgment. And I, I don't, I mean, every parent uh, can use their good judgment and say, no, son, you can go next year. So you can go when you get your learner part. You can do something like that. But um, the consequences are absolutely final and severe. And I, I, I know that you took all of it in consideration, but this is not... For recreation, this isn't for having a good time. We can, that we adults, we can go right down and watch the sunset and and uh, get all the fuzzies, and and that's and that's fine. And but many of us have to use it for a um, uh, for a purpose of a work, a job, uh, uh, going to the senior citizens in, in one case. And uh, there are just so many compelling reasons that. Uh, Adults need to use the golf cart, but 
And well, I'll ask you all, can you think of one compelling reason that it says that a 14-year-old needs to be driving a golf cart on our highways and city streets? I mean, what's the circumstances? It's taking the grandfather to the hospital. Okay, that's different. <laughs> to the medical center. That's different. That's an emergency. Is there... I mean, had the discussion, there had to be somebody really compelling saying, uh-uh, hey, yeah. this has got to be... Do you want me to meeting? recap from the last That's meeting? That's fine. That's what I was yeah. So, for the okay, last meeting, this, this came up, and state law uh, <coughs> sets the minimum age of 14. So it allows 14-year-olds under state law to do it. The commission um, discussed raising that age because we looked at other ordinances that include a higher age, 15, 16, you know, on up. Um, I received a call from the Attorney General's office on uh, to go over some of the opinions that they've issued in the past. And there's an opinion from 2003, um, which we discussed about this specific issue on age, where the Attorney General's office rendered the opinion that a city cannot restrict the age. That once the state basically preempts and says, you know, we cannot require licenses, and anybody 14 or up can drive them, that that is the final word on the matter, that, that cities do not have the discretion to, to bump that up. Um, and if, if we choose to adopt one of these ordinances, now the way to keep 14 year olds off the road and add a golf carts at 14 is to not pass the ordinance, right? And golf carts aren't allowed on the road. But once you allow golf carts on the road, that it was um, their opinion that the, the Attorney General's opinion on that still stood that if we, if we wanted to see if there was a change in that opinion based on some changes to state law, that we should submit to um, get a new opinion to see if their opinion changed, basically, to the Attorney General. So we actually went deep on yeah. that. <laughs> Thank you. Good answer. Sure. <laughs> and so we may, at my request, ask in the future to, uh, and I may ask that in the future, if we can go out for an Attorney General opinion, which can take up to six months if we can raise the uh, age a year or two. Um, but we, as, as Commissioner Millender said, and I agreed, we don't want to slow down the process at this time to, to get golf carts on the road operating legally. So um, we'll, we'll um, maybe go out for an attorney general opinion well, well, sometime in the future. Uh, 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 I want to give you a real example. Um, my wife went to Tennessee to, um, to Georgia. She, she's back. She went to Tennessee, um, and uh, and I'm alone with the, um, the expedition truck, and battery day. Oh, the golf cart saved the day. It was just great. Right. <laughs> 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 the golf cart and go to the IGA. But there, there is obviously obvious uses for all of our, all of our citizens for the golf cart. But one of the things really important. I have to commend you on the, um, how expeditiously you brought up the subject, kept it going, and, uh, and are getting the job done. It's just really a good job. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so James Sinclair. Oh, Mr. Sinclair. <coughs> well, I think you've already answered my question. <laughs> uh, Probably about a year ago, you know, you called me and we were talking about getting people from the airport going across the bridge, and I told you it's probably impossible. Mm -hmm. but now, if you've got golf carts that are legal and insured and all, just like a car, what can you do to lower the speed limit on the state highway from the bridge, say, up to the beach? Because we get a lot of calls where people just want to get their golf cart from Carabao. Or somewhere else and go up there to the beach and run back and forth. And if you could get that down to 35 from there to the beach, you'd get a lot more people coming I in. don't think that they're going to allow golf carts on the state road at all, no matter. Just talking about low speed vehicles. Oh, low speed vehicles. Thank you. Uh, and I mean, all we can do. Right. Yes. If, they're, if it's 35 miles an hour, yes. Well, if I rented you one, I'd uh -huh. have a Tyler Mitchell mm -hmm. and tag. Right. Attack, so all we can do is ask the FDOT for a speed limit analysis, which is what they do. 
Uh, I haven't asked for one out here uh, in this direction. I have asked for them to please put warning signs up in the curb out there before you approach um, um, Gulf Beach Drive, and they haven't done that. I, I actually sat on the uh, Franklin County Traffic Safety Team. I chaired that, and we got the, all these reflectors out here, but it took us about five years of asking every year on, on this out here, just east of uh, Island View Park. So, you know, we can go uh, uh, through Courtney, and we can ask the FDOT to come and do a speed analysis out there and see if they can consider lowering, lowering the, that's the only way. That's yeah, the only yeah, way they'll do it. Well, back then, you told me you had the power, so that's the reason I said that. I didn't say I had the power. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, if you've got that much power, you're doing good. Right? <laughs> no. But it would just help you in uh, a lot of people. It would, and, and, and it would help it become more of a uh, vacation-style exactly. community. Exactly, yeah, mm -hmm. because we get a tremendous amount of you know, doing that stuff. And also, not to try to sell something, but if anybody needs any work on we do all that work down there. Oh, okay. Bridge on the right. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, but let, let me add one one thing to that. By knowledge that I know other some other local another local government that's asked DOT to look at speed reductions in their areas because of congestion. It's local, and uh, DOT did not go along with it. Just as the mayor described on some other requests. And I know of a recent one that was had been well. The request has been going on, I think, for over a year. But DOT declined the request. Yeah, the government. Well, you could just tell them we're having so much business down there. So yeah. Okay. We just can't we got uh, the multi-use path are they allowed to be uh, used if it's the, eight feet wide? Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, and they're considering extending that to the bridge, correct? Yes. So that would that would help get them back and forth but with the multi-use path. Mm -hmm. That's in the in the plans already. So mm -hmm. if it's eight feet wide, then they could come off River Road and Airport and Road and go all the way down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now uh, I know that's all the speaker cards, but uh, I will consider a very brief comment. Does anyone have anything else? Not you. You got a hint. I said one uh, how can Appalachia and St. George Island have their age at 16? I've already asked that question. <laughs> yeah, that's up to them. Yeah. So, I they, they, they will yeah. face the Attorney General opinion. Uh, so, uh, uh, Miss Julie, did you have something? Okay, we'll just come right up here and tell us your name. My name is Julie Oh uh, Yeah, my golf cart is not register or insurance but uh, but my grandparents is the one that bought it and they're already gone and um is there any like okay so like would i have a way to put a tag on yours is you just don't. a regular mm -hmm. golf cart yeah, yeah. you don't need to okay i was just asking just stay off highway 98 yes ma'am but fine. until we have not adopted this yet it won't yeah, be done for a fine. couple of three more weeks that's fine. okay all right. All right. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to ask this hard question now. Does anyone in this room think that we are banning golf carts in the city of Carabelle through this process? Is there anyone in this room that thinks that? Does everyone in this room understand that we are uh, working to adopt a golf cart ordinance that would make operation of golf carts legal on city streets and roads? Does everyone understand that? Okay. Is there any other discussion? Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>